to Ukraine now, and Russian missiles targeted another Ukrainian nuclear power plant, this one in southern Ukraine. Now, security cameras captured this moment when those missiles hit the facility just a few hundred yards from the reactors themselves. Officials say the plant's power units are still operational, thankfully. Meantime, Ukraine's President Zelensky insists there's no lull on the front line with Russia, saying his troops are preparing to take back even more territory as part of its sweeping counteroffensive. Let's bring in CNN military analyst Colonel Cedric Layton now. He's a retired Air Force colonel. And we've seen now Russians go after another nuclear power plant, Colonel. How, how do you make sense of this? What is Russia thinking? Yeah, Anna, this is uh, the, really the difference in the way the Russians wage war versus how we wage war. Uh, the Russians are deliberately targeting the nuclear power plants that Ukraine has, as long with the rest of the infrastructure that uh, uh, Ukraine uh, uh, controls. Uh, so what it means is that the Russians are also probably going to use, or at least make the attempt at using, uh, the nuclear power plants uh, that are still in Ukrainian hands as possible weapons against the Ukrainians themselves. Uh, by targeting them, by forcing them offline, that would have a significant impact on the Ukrainian energy grid uh, and on the power supply in Ukraine itself. So that is uh, the Russian goal. It's really a war against the civilian population more than anything else. President Zelensky says this current phase right now is not a lull, that this is, quote, preparation for the next sequence. He says a preparation for the liberation of even more cities. On one hand, he's expressing confidence. I don't know if he's trying to rally the troops, but do you think it's wise for him to preview that that's their plan? Well, it kind of goes both ways. You know, on the one hand, I would say it's best not to preview the plan. Uh, you know, there is something to be said for operational security and for keeping these things under wraps. The other thing is uh, this may be a way of motivating the troops uh, and of telling them, uh, and also the civilian population, frankly, and telling them that this is, uh, you know, something that's coming next. You can expect more advances. Uh, and it may, in the third analysis, be a signal to the West saying, hey, we're not stopping, we are moving mm. forward, and we need your help. So, uh, you know, there's clearly a multifaceted approach that uh, President Zelensky is undertaking, and uh, they want to make sure that they can maintain their momentum. And in order to maintain that momentum, they need the population to stay on their side, and they also need the West to continue to provide them with weapons. And then, of course, winter is on its way to the region. How's that going to change things, do you think? Well, General Winter, as he was known during World War II, uh, euphemistically, is a key element in the weather in Ukraine and really in the way in which all of the forces uh, move or don't move uh, over that terrain. Uh, so as colder temperatures come into play, what you're going to see is, in some ways, it's going to be easier for uh, tanks and armored personnel carriers to move across the country up to a point. But uh, after a certain temperature, things can start to freeze. So, you know, if they don't have the right kind of antifreeze, uh, things could get stuck. And that could uh, really put a, a damper on things. And it could stall out any advances that uh, are, you know, that the Ukrainians are planning. And the same goes for the Russians, of course. So what we're looking at is uh, I think the Ukrainians are moving forward as much as they possibly can to gain as much territory before the onset of the really cold temperatures. Let's switch gears for just a, a quick moment here. Listen to what President Biden just said about Taiwan and how the U.S. would respond if China were to invade. There's a one China policy that Taiwan makes their own judgments about their independence. We are not moving. We're not encouraging their being independent. We're not let that's their decision. But would U.S. forces defend the island? Yes, if in fact there was an unprecedented attack. So unlike Ukraine, to be clear, sir, U.S. forces, U.S. men and women would defend Taiwan in the event of a Chinese invasion? Yes. So this isn't the first time the president has said something like this, but that's a, a lot less ambiguous. And that is not official U.S. policy. Why go that far? Is that risky? It is certainly risky, Anna, and, you know, I think in part what the president was doing was he was outlining the fact uh, that, and the Chinese are well aware of this, that the United States has what's called an operation 
plan uh, to defend Taiwan. We've had one for many years. Uh, and uh, the Chinese know that we have this plan. Uh, they are also maneuvering their forces uh, to show that it would be very difficult for us to defend Taiwan. Uh, they can defend uh, you know, certain parts of it, but uh, the Taiwanese are at risk of being surrounded by a Chinese naval blockade. Uh, as one example, the Chinese now have that capability, which they really didn't have before, and they yeah. showed that in their latest exercise. Size. Uh, so the president is going ahead with uh, some of these uh, statements, uh, kind of signaling to, uh, to both Taiwan and China that, yes, the United States would defend it if there were an unprecedented attack on Taiwan. But if the country, if Taiwan, uh, decided to peacefully reunify with China, then none of this, of course, would be on the table. So that's uh, you know kind of a message that he's uh, sending. He's saying that the one China policy still stands, but uh, that the Chinese uh, better not go ahead and uh, try to invade the island. Yeah, not to do anything forcefully. Thank you, Colonel Cedric Layton. I appreciate your time.